elevate your testing game five game storming techniques so what is game storming how is it related to testing all these questions we will dive deep in today's webinar this will be a uh, 40 minutes plus 10 minutes of q a and then few special announcements so let's see what's in store there we go get ready to spend the next 52 minutes on these items what is a game and game storming five techniques and its application in testing and those five techniques are empathy map dot voting context map stakeholder analysis customer employee shareholder and then finally a bonus six point speedboat then the next steps and then finally we'll have q a and then we'll also listen to how can test masters academy help you plus a surprise and i will not be able to see the chat so if you have any burning issue a blocker a showstopper please unmute and uh, speak out with that let's go to the next slide oh simple question but difficult to answer what is a game a game as per this book called game storming on which this entire presentation is kind of or this webinar is based out of is the book name is called game storming a playbook for innovators rule breakers and change makers when i read these words innovators rule breakers and change makers i said innovation in testing yeah not that great but at least we are not behind uh, behind you know uh, innovation rule breakers yes first in the race testers right change makers yes so maybe this should have been a game storming a playbook for testers uh, Till that book is written, let's use this book and then understand what is a game. So a game has five key items. You need a game space. There needs to be a, a separate reality or a parallel universe, as they call it, right, for a game to happen. For example, a cricket happens in a cricket ground right at a cricket ground it doesn't happen on uh, the streets yes it happens that is a street game a game played you know the gully cricket but when it is in a stadium that is like a specific game so first there is a space a boundary right and with that boundaries you highlight what are the rules what are the interaction rules how many people what is a point what is a score you know you you need some rules to maintain that score and then finally you need artifacts artifacts as in what will you use to play the game and what will you create out of that game and finally the fifth point is the goal what is the goal of the game so these five points put together are super critical to define any activity as a game so there needs to be a game space then boundaries hey if you do this this is called as cheating if you don't do this it is fair play right so that is boundary then the interaction rules uh, how do multiple players play if it is a single player game what are the rules and then artifacts what do we do what do we use and what do we deliver and then finally the goal what is the objective of this game you know football you know someone has to score a goal in the opponent's uh, net right so that's the goal end goal whoever whoever scores the maximum number of uh, uh, goals uh, whoever scores the maximum number of goals wins it right so that way uh, that becomes the goal of the game so that way let's understand the five stages of the game the five stages are imagine the world after you imagine the world in your game world 
then you create that world with rules correct mm-hmm. with that then you open the world wherein you enter into it along with other players and then you explore the world while exploring the world you play it and then uh, either you win you lose or you even get to a draw and then finally you uh, close the world so these are the different stages of the game so we'll now move on to the next slide where we highlight or categorize these five different stages into two key themes first the imagining the world as well as creating the world they come under game design okay so because here we are designing the game creating the rules um setting up the boundaries all of that that is game game design then when you enter you play and then finally you close or you win lose draw that is like part of the play so there are two key stages of a game the game design and the play okay with that let's go to the game storming how is game storming uh related to game and how is it different from a brainstorming we all understand what is brainstorming when people get together discuss about a problem statement and then analyze the different options that is brainstorming now what is game storming what is the purpose of ga- game storming see when the process is clear when you know the end goal right all you have to do is follow a set process a steps and then repeat it and then you achieve the goal right maybe uh, like a manufacturing industry you know what is needed you have created one unit of the end product and then you just have to replicate it correct the, so that is process whereas in creative fields like testing arts what happens is sometimes the goal is fuzzy the goal we are not aware the goal we are not super clear in those cases what happens is we need to explore a lot and when we need to explore a lot there cannot be a defined process the defined process will lead to a defined goal but here we don't know the goal and when we don't know the goal what needs to happen is we need to explore possibilities correct and that is where game storming comes into picture because exploring possibilities cannot happen through a set defined process you need to bring in the game aspect and which one does testing resemble more the process or the game what's your answer is it more like a process or is it like a game 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 yeah. yes there is a process what is the fun if there are no uh exceptions so yes there are few people who say process the majority are saying game the debate is not today's intention let's go to the next i just wanted to highlight these terms for you to think through and then what are the core game storming skills the core game storming skills are these four questioning artifacts and meaningful space visual language and improvisation now we have heard these skills before correct questioning creating artifacts using visual language continuously improvising not much different from software testing at all and those these skills are core game storming skills correct so now let's go ahead and discuss few game storming techniques my suggestion to you is when you und- when you listen to these understand them think about them question them and then go ahead and apply don't blindly jump from understanding to application ensure you follow these two steps as well in between understand think question 
and then apply. So here is a preview of the six game storming techniques. Let's go one by one. The first is empathy map. Now empathy map looks like this, where you draw a person face, and then you start with who, who are we empathizing with? What do they need to do? What do they see? What do they say? What do they do? What do they hear? And then finally, what do they think and feel? Do not worry if you're not able to read the questions below the main questions. The next slide is a small exercise where you'll spend time working on this. So the intention behind this empathy map is once you draw this, you think of a stakeholder, usually a user, a customer, or any stakeholder for that matter, whom you need to understand about. Okay. And then you answer these questions with respect to that person. So the first question, who are we empathizing with? Our prospect, our customer, our shareholders, our employees, our manager, or uh, the government representative, whoever it is, right? So once you fix that, you answer that. Who is the person we want to understand? What is their role in this situation? And things like that. Slowly you move on to all these questions, the seven questions, okay? So this helps in understanding your persona. Many a times, we think we have fully understood that persona. Oh, we know whom we are developing for. We know whom we are testing this product for. But then maybe it is at a very, very superficial level, a surface level. But when we do this exercise, the empathy map technique, when we apply it in testing, then new perspectives emerge, uh, the hidden things emerge, or maybe when two people do the same exercise, there is a conflict, and which is a very good thing if it happens at the start of the project, correct? Rather than, oh, I thought uh, I had to deliver this uh, for XYZ persona because they do ABC. But then when you realize that they start using, they are doing it maybe BCD, correct? So that is where you will get rid of all those confusions, clarifications uh, through this empathy map. So you'll understand your persona better. You will go ahead and identify the missing features because when you understand your persona in depth, in terms of how is a day in the life of my persona, you understand their activities, then you'll say, hold on, we don't have that feature. They are not going to tap here. They are in fact going to write this down in their book because we don't have that feature of consolidation. Let's build in a consolidation feature, correct? So that way we'll start identifying missing features. We'll also focus on user experience issues. And then we'll emphasize on the right metrics. How many people downloaded? No. How many people completed XYZ activity in that scenario? We'll focus on that. Correct? So that is emphasizing the right activities. Delight the users. Because now we understand them much better. We are not just presenting them features. We exactly know what do they want next. And then what will give them happiness? What will delight them? So we will start delighting our users. And we will be in a better position to course correct early. Correct? And we will align our entire team towards common goals. Hey, the product owner thinks something, the development team thinks something, the operation teams think something, the testing team thinks something. No. Everyone is in the same meeting room discussing the empathy map. They understand why we are doing what we are doing, the use case. We understand how the user is going to use the day-to-day -day activities, the pain points, the gains, all of it. 
and then so the entire team the entire project team is aligned so that way empathy map is a strong technique if used right and early and then implemented okay so now let's move on to the next one oh there is a small exercise for you go to the link bit.ly tma for test masters academy tma emap empathy map tma emap you will see the canvas read the questions think of your customer and write down the question you had never paid attention to till you saw the empathy map or the questions listed in the empathy map you have 3 minutes time and your time starts now go for it so you should see this empathy map canvas and then think of read through the questions and see which question did you not think of till now and then type that question in the chat last 1 minute nice what do they hear what do they need to do differently all questions under what do they hear what are they hearing others say from friends what can we imagine them saying yes good ones last 10 seconds what can we imagine them doing what are they watching and reading what do they see all questions good thank you with that let's go to the next technique which is even more interesting which is the context map testing and testers need to understand about the context if they want to do good testing if they don't understand context they'll keep repeating the same stuff and keep expecting different results so with this context map technique the idea is to first draw trends and put a blank line before the trends and the same thing here blank line and then the trends on the right side and then at the bottom left come with technology factors bottom right put the uncertainties cloud and then put the customer at the center called customer needs and then at the top two clouds political factors and economic climate now after this is ready take this to your team and ask for our goal which are those trends that we are foreseeing which will affect the goal right which are those political factors that will affect our goal or project same way what do you think about the economic climate what are the uncertainties what are the customer needs fill out all these sections now when you do this with your team there are high chances that you will discover stuff that you were totally unaware of for example your competitor had a huge presence in one of the countries where there is sports uh, a mega event of sports so at that time they might not be able to do uh, give the right kind of support to you support to uh, the customer then you could pitch in so trying to understand the external factors affecting the context and not the internal company factors so this context map is highly focused on the external factors so take your team fill out all these sections and then discuss what is important what is not important why did someone think about something and so on and related back to how are they meeting or helping the customer needs so that's about context map the next one is interesting stakeholder analysis the first image where you see the stakeholders individuals and groups is where we write out all the stakeholders that we know right and then 
we start grouping them. Hey, these are all, these all stakeholders fall under marketing department. These all stakeholders fall under third party vendors. These all stakeholders fall under internal project team. These all stakeholders form under, fall under the legal team. So that way group all the stakeholders. So once you create a list of stakeholder groups, then map the list on this grid. This grid has low power, high interest, they don't have so much of authority, but they have high interest in the success of this project. Same way, uh, the opposite, the diagonal ones, they have high power, super authority. You now they can, they have that veto power, but they are low interest in this project. And then the other two, high power, high interest and low power, low interest. So once you prepare this grid and then group these stakeholder groups or categorize them or align them on this grid, then you develop a strategy for each of these quadrants and then share it broadly with your teams. And then you will understand uh, how it goes well with RACI metrics. RACI is responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed metrics. Now applying it to testing, it will help with which feature to test first? Feature A is quadrant one, feature B is quadrant two and so on, feature three and feature four. Do we test for feature A? Because it is of super interest to this group, but they don't have so much of money to pay us, right? And at the same time, we have a feature B, which is both high power and high interest. So that might be a feature that we will focus first, correct? So that way you could prioritize and you could also understand how deep to test. So answers can be discovered through this discussion, okay? So that is the purpose and objective of stakeholder analysis. We'll come back to the question, Mahati. And then dot voting. Sometimes being a facilitator is so difficult, being a referee is so difficult, that the fights start. Hey, you did not listen to me. I did not listen to you. You know, why should they, everyone talk about my topic? Why not that topic? Dot voting is the answer. Put all the topics at the left, give everyone a minimum of five votes and let them go and put the dots. Whichever has the max dots, go ahead and take the decision. Correct? So that way it helps you take decisions Understand the relative weightage of topics. Hey, I thought without the dots, what will happen is if there are four topics, all four will look the same priority, correct? But then in this case, the weightage will be highlighted because of the number of dots. You'll also understand why some ideas did not get votes. For example, the third topic, why did it get one vote? Hey, why did others not vote? I'm not blaming, but I'm trying to understand. So that way they'll say, oh, you know what? We keep discussing about this, but we don't uh, move ahead. That's why I did not vote. Or uh, we, this will anyways be revamped in the next release. So why discuss about it now? So that's also a valid point. So you will understand what people are thinking. And then it's a wonderful way to facilitate discussions. So that's about dot voting. And then, there is customers, employees, shareholders. This technique says, divide your group into three groups. One is the C group, the customers. One is the E group, the employees. And then the third group is the shareholders. Once you have these three groups, send them to three different corners of the room and then ask them these questions. Hey, imagine your business five years from now, my dear customer. Hey, my dear employee. Imagine our business five years from now and shareholder, imagine our business five years from now. Write down the answer. And then again, ask this question. The next question, what will you value? What will your experience be? What events or trends will emerge? What specific tangible things are different? Once they answer all of this, then bring all those answers and then discuss. Now it is like wearing different people's hats or being in different people's shoes so that 
many a times the teams think from one user and then majority takes over and then they just go ahead and build something and then the next stakeholder group comes and then they say oh we never thought about it but then through using this technique we'll get rid of that problem so think of customers employees shareholders and the same way in terms of when we are testing you could always ask question for a specific feature from the perspective of a customer why is this feature built from the perspective of a employee how difficult is it to test this from a shareholder perspective how much will this help our business goal so when you as a tester go ahead and ask these questions i am 100% sure someone with the right sense will definitely notice you and then you will be rewarded and cycle through these multiple roles so if you have played the c role come play the e role then play the s role and then repeat the cycle this is ideal for feature or fix prioritization effort versus value estimation how much should i put in the effort uh it is low value to the shareholders low value to the customer also but super interesting to the employees but that's okay don't put in so much of effort it is high effort for employees but then there is higher return for the shareholders also and customers may be medium impact maybe it's worth putting the effort correct so that way you will get to know whether to put in the effort or not with that the last technique speedboat is this sit in a room bring everyone concerned the speedboat the boat that you see here is your final goal or the product or the project okay or the service that you as a company are giving or you as a team are giving and you know what anchors do for a speedboat they slow down they in fact don't let the speedboat go further correct or any ship go further that's what the purpose of the anchor is now you go and paste post its as imaginary anchors and you ask everyone what are these obstacles slowing down the boat for your own feature you start thinking which feature of my product is slowing down the sales of this product and let everyone answer that and if someone says you know what the screen sharing feature in zoom is the one that slows down zoom don't defend or attack that person or the point no that's not the purpose of this technique let everyone contribute paste the points what they think as the obstacle slowing down the boat do not get into problem solving mode oh i know how to solve it no don't do that and then to add more fun ask them how fast the boat would go once the anchors are removed let them put the speed as well with this exercise participants like walk up to the wall add their anchors and return back to the seats and then the facilitator facilitates the discussion in terms of hey um is everyone done can we discuss can we group and how fast will the boat go and then maybe collect that data for another meeting later where we'll discuss in terms of which to pick and how to solve so that's speed boat technique so as a summary the game storming techniques the empathy map helps you in user understanding the dot voting helps in collaboration the stakeholder analysis helps in prioritization the three people customers employees shareholders helps in planning the context map helps in context understanding and then finally speedboat helps in uncovering the bias with that i would like to slowly transition from black slides black background slides to a gray slide to a whitish slide where i want to highlight the team behind the test masters academy who is presenting to you multiple conferences 
and the upcoming conference is the C star quality conference. And this is the team which has also brought you this webinar and multiple panel discussions going forward. And I want to highlight one more thing is Test Masters Academy has a lot of workshops planned for individuals in terms of mentoring, coaching, and in group, which will be public workshops and for corporates, customized workshops. If you are interested or your teams or your company is interested, this is the email to reach out to. And with that, I would like to take the questions for this webinar, game storming techniques to elevate your testing game. This, and the, the title was five. I gave you six because testers need to learn to break the rules and continuously add value. Okay, all yours, please do shoot out your questions in the chat or you can unmute. I think I would prefer the chat option so that that way we could um, save time. If you have a question, please do type it out in the chat. All right. In context map, what is political factors and economic climate? Two countries are in war. So you don't get support from the people living there if your team members are there. So that will affect the project release. That is political factors. Economic climate, maybe you're not able to get um, uh, devices from a specific country or people are not buying stuff people are not going out and buying stuff because maybe it's recession so how will your product sell in that country correct so those are the factors when discussed you will start uh, coming up with ideas maybe you will focus on different markets or you will say buy now pay later right or you will say no cash on delivery because maybe people don't have cash correct so that that those factors will help you build that context so that you can take uh, informed decisions. I hope I answered that question. Yeah, thank you. And what is RACI matrix? RACI stands for R for responsible, A for accountable, C for consulted, and I for informed. For example, we have this task of setting up this webinar. Who needs to do what? How will we know if we are a team of five? So we list out all the tasks and then we say, okay, person A is responsible to, for sending the invite. Person B is accountable that this needs to happen for um, setting up the Zoom maybe. But person D also needs to be consulted because it is person D's license. So person D needs to be consulted and informed about using their Zoom license, but person B is accountable for setting up the invite and person C is um, consulted on how to write that email to send it to the uh, registrants, correct? So this way, there's no confusion. Work is beautifully divided. Everyone knows their roles and responsibilities. So that's the power of a RACI matrix. Any further questions? So let me show you the summary slide again. Empathy map, dot voting, um, stakeholder analysis, and then Customers, employees, shareholders, technique, context map, and then finally, speed board. Where is the best to use each technique? Yeah, I think this, this slide is the answer, Anna. 
whenever you want to understand i think everyone should use all the techniques all the time uh, that's what i would uh, suggest or recommend you want to understand about your customers in depth use the empathy map you want to collaborate well within your team members use the dot routing especially if there are multiple decisions to be taken and then you don't know which one to take or which one to whose opinion to agree disagree or to rank first use dot routing prioritization when multiple teams are there and then um you don't know you have to fix the priority use the use this technique then planning of course when you plan a feature how does it impact each of the stakeholders context map for the project and to solve problems and then speedboat speedboat to uncover the bias and uh, start putting out the black hat from the six thinking hats so i think speedboat is related to that testers are the company's babysitter yes and it's so difficult a job babysitting you can't shout at the baby you can't shout at the parents uh, sometimes you are the parent so yeah with that we will give one more minute and we'll take one last question and then um, we'll give it to olga how do you sell these techniques to other team members keep the book near them let them read it on their own and then maybe invite them to webinars like this how do we use empathy map technique if the product is it to be launched then it becomes even more important because product is not at launched so you don't have direct user feedback so then who are you designing it for let's at least agree upon within the same team and to do that see when we say using empathy map we are not asking the user to fill these questions we are answering those questions on behalf of the user correct so that way when 5 to 10 team members are involved in this project let's understand what each one thinks about the user and that comes out in the form of this empathy map different sections and thereby we'll realize that are we meeting uh this particular goal of this user because under goal section three of the five members wrote these points but i don't think our product will help achieve these goals so maybe then uh, we need to go back to the drawing board correct or maybe we need to change the claims or if someone writes a pain point and if we are sure that our product will not help resolve those pain points for a future intended prospect then this is the right time to fix it correct rather than uh, launch it put it in the hands of the user and then get the feedback then fix it correct so that way uh, it's a good idea to use empathy map early with that i would hand it over to olga and i would stop sharing my screen and good to see a uh, lot of familiar teams thank you everyone for attending